Okay. I will start drawing my life. For those people who never, who hasn't seen me drawing about my life and who don't know me or you're new to my stream, this is a good opportunity to get to know me. So, I was born in 1992, July 28th, as a monkey, monkey year. And then I was born. And apparently, my mom got super sick after giving birth to me. It was like very dangerous to her life, but fortunately, she got better. No, not as a boy. I, w I am a girl. Woman. And then the funny story uh, was a funny story when I was a baby. When my mom was breastfeeding me, milk won't come out, so I bit my mom's nipple really hard. So my mom got mad. And threw me, oh, not mad, but my mom was surprised and then threw me. Yeah, threw me. And then that is how I became dank. As fuck. Or clumsy. It explains a lot. It's very important um, life, life changing moment here. My mom was like, God damn it. And then threw me. And then I was like, feels bad, man. And then that is, um, that's what, what happened. When I was a baby, and then 1997, my brother was born. This is me. My brother was born. This is my brother. <laughs> and okay, by this time, 1997, when I was like really, really young, my dad, my dad used to be like CEO of a really big company with a lot of money. So we were actually living in this like a uh, living in this like really nice fancy apartment. It was like really really big, really really big. Yeah, a lot of refrigerators. So we were like rich as fuck. And my mom started teaching elementary school student. And my mom was teaching elementary school kids. But because they were both outside working all the time, I had to take care of my brother. So that's the reason why we're like, kind of really close and friends. What about sister? Sister was a bitch. Sister was like, eh, whatever. And yeah, right now sister is nice, but back then sister was very, very um, domineering. Sister who would be like, yo, I'll give you like, you know, one dollar, get a snack. And then I'll be like, okay, I came back with snack. I'm like, okay. And then she eats all the snack, not even sharing. Yeah, very bossy, very domineering. We weren't that close. We're, but um, my brother and I were pretty close and we grew up together. And then one day, my dad, because of business, my dad flew from South Korea to Brazil. And then this was like years. It took like years. I think like five years or something. Very, very long time. So my mom had to take care of all three of us. And my mom had to go to elementary school, teach kids, and then come back. So like, we were, we were like, individual. My sister was busy hanging out, and then me and my brother was always like, hanging out together. And then, I think during one of these times, we couldn't even see each other that much during this time. One time we visited like, Thailand together, like really, no, this is before. We visited Australia together. Yeah, Australia. And then that's where my mom and my dad like met, like didn't meet for years and then finally met and then we met dad too and then it was kind of awkward because we didn't see each other for years. And then whenever dad had to leave Australia and then we had to go apart, my mom was like, I still remember even though I was like super young, my mom's face was like really, really sad. My mom was like, like very sad and then couldn't even like give us food sad. Yeah, so this was very difficult years for my mom and dad. But anyway, after like five years, my mom and dad decided like, oh yeah, we're we're married together. We have three kids, so you know we have to do this together. So we're like, okay, I'm gonna do business in U.S. So you know what? Let's go to U.S. So we're like, okay, we're gonna meet in U.S. So we all decided to fly to U.S. when I was 16 years old. When I was 16 years old and my brother was like 11 years No, no, when I was Korean age 14 years old. And no, Korean age 16, 
like international age 14 when my brother was like nine years old or something we all yeah american dream we all flew to america and america is very very capitalistic expensive country right and my dad got like this visa called e2 visa where you know like you can't get it if you want to like have business or something so we all flew there and my sister was like nah i don't like america i'm gonna fly to japan so my sister was like kick bye and then my sister went to japan and me and my brother we all went to america so because we we're in america for six years um my sister and our family was apart for like six years as well so that's that also explains why me and my brother and my sister aren't that close you know smart no not, not smart sister yeah so we started living in america and then i went to high four years high school public high school and then i did like esl classes and stuff with a lot of other students like learning a b c d my english was very bad in the beginning and you know i went to california and california has a lot of asian and a lot of korean so like everyone was like hey welcome i am korean too yeah i am korean too and then i was like yay and then so i hung out with them all together during the time when i was in america i only spoke like korean and only hung out with korean people if i didn't do that my english probably is better right now yeah sister didn't join yakuza so we're like all hanging out together and then during this time i hit puberty i hit puberty button and i was uh smoking and then <laughs> drinking i was a very very uh bad student didn't go to class dude i was smoking i'm not in puberty right now and if i smoke right now that wouldn't that wouldn't be like puberty that's just like you know your life choices but bad and i don't smoke but anyway smoking and drinking and then hanging out with bad guy bad friends kind of bad friends like yo do some weeds because like these the people that i hung out with they were also like kind of like doing drugs and one of them was like drug dealer too you know there would be like 20 dollar for this pack of you know weed or something i did i did weed one time and i didn't like it like when i was it was like very long time ago yeah long time ago i do remember because my first boyfriend's uh my first boyfriend's brother was like kind of like doing this and then he was selling like with tony dollar so i was that kid and then when i hit 18 years old i'm like hmm i should think about what i want to do in the future right so i was at pottery class in high school and then pottery class, I was pretty good at art there, I was pretty good at pottery. So teacher recommended me to go to like art school. So I went to art school. The good thing about America is, America is like a country of opportunities. Even if you are bad at something and if you, did, you didn't do it that well in certain thing, they're like, they always give a second chance. Yeah, they always give second chance because my GPA in high school was like, 2.1 or something 2.1 it was very low and even art school they ask certain like certain grade so art school was like yeah so they called they're like they're like yeah we like your drawing but um you know your grade is really bad so do you think you'll be able to like improve it or like get a certain score and then we'll accept you so I was like, okay, then I'll do that. So I studied and then I did I I got like SAT. Well, considering how bad anonymous name $3. Con considering how bad I was at the English, I got like from 2400 after studying really hard, I got like 1650 score. Which is not too bad to go to art school. So I got pretty good score from, you know, SAT. So I was able to go to art school. 1650 is not a good SAT score if you want to go to like re really really nice university But dude, I was really bad at English So it's not too bad Yeah, yeah, yeah So I went to art school Art school was like $3,000 a month in minimum 
minimum three hundred dollar a month. And then very bad news happened. Well, very bad news happened because my mom and dad and everybody decided to go to go back to Korea. They're like, oh, we should go back to Korea. I was like, why? And then they're like, yeah, because that business, that's business in America didn't take off, so we don't have any money. And my mom used all her savings, and then you know she also got a lot of loan from banks, and then you know she, basically we didn't have any money. And our entire family was like broke, no money, man. So because my dad's business didn't work out well, and then new business that he wanted to do in America also didn't work out. So they all flew back to Korea. They all, all flew back to Korea, and I was the only one who, you know, decided to stay in America a little longer because I had university. Right? I had art school, right? But then, of course, I couldn't earn three thousand dollar a month. So after staying with my friends a little bit, I'm like, okay, shit. So well, this is not gonna work out. So I also decided to go back to Korea as well. No, sister is back in Korea. Sister is back in Korea. And then I came back to Korea. And then because our family couldn't afford house, so no house <laughs> feels bad, man. In the beginning, when we first got back to like Korea, we didn't have any house, so we decided to live with uh, grandma. Yeah, so we <laughs> lived. We 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 decided to live with grandma. Me, my dad, and my mom, and my. Brother, like we decided to live at my grandma's house. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, so we lived <laughs> my grandma's house, which was like very, very far from like very, very far countryside. My mom went back to teaching, and my dad trying to earn money from doing some software thing. And then I was uh, taking break for two years. You know, from art school, trying to earn money. So this is the time where I did a lot of part-time job. Yeah, this is time when I, yeah, Grandma MVP and my brother was addicted to games, League of Legend and Ion, just like nonstop would play it. And then this is also when when I made like Caterpie phone game, and then the cow, super cow, the uh, cow nipple milking game. Yeah, this is a uh, this is the time when when I made this too because I had like nothing to do, and then I was like, you know what, this country this countryside was like okay, so this is Seoul, and then it was very very far. It was like Kangwondo, so it was like three hours away. So I'm like, you know what, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna go to Seoul myself, and then I'm gonna try to you know get part time job and then earn money there, and then I'm gonna try to go back to America. So I went to Seoul. And then I rented this house that was like three hundred dollar a month in Seoul. That was literally they. It was like very very small. It's shared. It's a shared bathroom, and then there's no window. And then how it looked like was like this is this is bed, and then this is door, and then 고시원 같은데, and then this is the desk. That's it. This is how it looked like. Yeah, like prison, like prison, literally like prison. Three hundred dollar, and then um, prison cell. It looks like this. Yeah, it was really, really small. No bathroom, and uh, no kitchen. This is all shared kitchen, shared bathroom, and just like bed and desk, and that's it. No window too, so I couldn't get any sunlight. And uh, during this time, I did a, uh, I did a uh, waiter, a waitress. And then that was like four dollar an hour. <laughs> Earning three k was impossible. Four dollar an hour, and I work like seven to eight hours a day. No, we got like I earned like what thirty two dollars a day. And there's no tip in Korea. Yeah, no tip. So that's just it. This minimum wage is to all you earn. Right now, it improved a lot, but this was uh, when I was twenty years old. One years or something, and the manager was like freaking psychopath. Oh my god, he would. If I make a small mistake, the manager would be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? Why do I even pay you? Like, dude, you pay thirty two dollar a day for working seven to eight hours." Like, <laughs> and then the guy, the guy was like, "No, you fucking sucks." I was like, "Holy shit!" And then the second job I did was like a receptionist. 
in some like architecture place and then I was like, oh, hi, and then, you know, pick up the phone and then I would like make them coffee and then like serve them coffee or something but then the boss was like I'll give money next month <laughs> money next month and then the thing about this guy is like he did that for a few times I was like okay sure and I waited I waited and then what happened is like one day they just disappeared and then there was news saying like oh this architecture place like broke and then they disappeared so I uh, I was supposed to get like around 2k dollars but then it's just like I couldn't get any like feels bad and I'm like gonna pay $300 a month and then I had to pay $300 $100 a month for this prison cell plus I had to eat and then this was like not it, was, it wasn't gonna do anything so I was keep trying to find a lot of like different jobs and then of all the interviews I've done like the funny 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 thing was like there was this like place where I went to do interview and then it was like downstairs it was like downstairs very very dark area and then there was this interviewer who was like sitting down, like really sus. It was like sitting down like this. And then and he was like, oh yeah, all you have to do is just like uh, pick up the phone and that's it. So I was like, okay, but like you, it pays really good. Com compared to other stuff, it was like $8 or $9. No, it was like, yeah, it was $9. So minimum wage back then was like four dollar, but it was like affording nine dollar for just picking up the phone. And I was like, okay, any is there any other detail? But apparently the the job is to like pick up some phone call from lonely men and then sweet talk them like, oh hi, oppa, like how are you? Like oh yeah, like it was something like that. Like what the fuck? Oh yeah, hi, oppa, like how are you? Like what's up? Or like say like sweet talking them or something. So this guy was like, yeah, just pick up the phone and then say sweet nice stuff. So I was like, oh uh, okay, this is kind of weird. So I left, and then I didn't get this job. Oh, of course, I didn't get this job. And then another stuff was like, oh yeah, it's a waitress. So I went to do interview and then, but it was the pay was really strong. So I was like, why is the pay so strong? And apparently, it's not just waitress. You also have to like talk to some customers sitting down like serving alcohol or something so I didn't do like that I didn't do that I didn't do that I didn't do this you know but interview experience was like very weird because the place was like very dark and you know and then I was like oh shit I cannot pay I cannot pay for this this prison cell so I went back to grandma's house grandma <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, welcome. So I was like, Phil's bad man. <laughs> yeah, well, I was like, Grandma to the rescue. And I was like, okay, Phil's bad man. I wanted to live in Seoul, but okay. So I went back to Grandma's house. And then this was when I started, uh, when I gave up going back to America because it's just like impossible to earn that much of a money. <laughs> Jenny, that guy with the phone job predicted your Wait, early Twitch tier so glove. We talk. I don't. I don't do like. Hi, Chad. You look handsome today. No, no, I don't. I did before. Like, no. I was just like communicating. That's not like bad. You know what I'm saying. So I gave up on U.S. Going back to U.S. because it's just way too expensive. So I was like, eh. I won't. I won't. I won't go back. But you know, in order to get a decent job, I had to you know go to university. So I uh, I started really hard. And then I went to, well, not really hard, I studied a little bit. And then I went to university, one Korean university, which wasn't that like fancy or prestigious. It's just like a normal uni with a, no, not Yonsei. This was, this is, this is before Yonsei. I, I went there for two years and my GPA was actually like 4.3 out of 4.5 was really good. I started really, really hard. I, 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 well, first of all, going to university, some system is like not that difficult. If you're really good at English, because Korea also, Korea value English, English skills a lot, first of all. So there are some universities that are, that are not that prestigious, but like, accept students who get really good grade from like TOEIC. 
And thankfully, because I lived in America for six years, I could get pretty good score from TOEIC. Not really good, but pretty good score. So I, I could go to like university pretty easy. And I went there, I studied really hard, and then I got 4.3 out of 4.5. And then I decided to transfer, and then transfer to Yonsei. So this, that's how I went to Yonsei. And I studied for two years. So if you think about it, I, I took break four years before I went to Yonsei. That's the reason why I graduated really late. Well, uh, this is funny, but Yonsei bird slogan, yeah, Yonsei. That's how I went to Yonsei, and then in order to earn money, because my English compared to other Korean people, my English was good, so I taught English to people, and then those people are pronouncing a lot of pro- lot of words wrong, probably, just like I. <laughs> pronounce this shit wrong, but anyway, I started to teach English. Yay, I started to teach English, and you know what? You know how many students I taught? I taught seven students every week, and then it's a tutor, so I had to go to their house and then teach them one by one. Some of them are old, some of them are young, you know, it's just like very difficult. And then, uh, tutor is like every one student every month is like $300. So if you multiply seven. By 300, then it's you know around 2,100. So I could afford like some house, small house in like Seoul or something that is not like prison. That is not like prison. This was di- really difficult. The, when I was preparing for transfer, when I was preparing for transfer, it was so difficult because Yonsei is like very very good university, considered very very good university in Korea, and basically you gotta. Studied really hard to, you know, go there. And then I studied really hard. I actually studied like 14 hours a day for like a year. So like, for example, I woke up at like 7 a.m. And then I finished studying at like 10 p.m. or 11. I was like studying so hard all the time. Studying, 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 studying. I was like, ugh, studying, studying. Oh, fucking, I hate studying, but like studying, studying. And then... Because I was studying for, you know, because I was studying so hard and then I was like stressed, I got bald spot. And you know how I found found out? <laughs> I was riding subway with my crush and he was like, you know, you, you don't have hair here. <laughs> it was very oof and very embarrassing because <laughs> it was in the back. It was on the back. I couldn't see it. No, I don't have bald spot. It was like actually just like just whole. On my hair like and you could see scab like this it was really bad so i had to go like take some medicine in order to fix ball spot but in the end i went to yonsei so that's all good and then i went to yonsei i was like hell yeah my life is gonna be like you know a bit better because you feel in korea there is actually like it's very superficial but i guess it's like realistic or something there are different kinds of university level, you know? And then this is where Yonsei is. Yonsei and Korea University and Seoul University and there are like MIT, I don't know, the really good university was like over there. And then I actually jumped from like around here to like all the way over there. So it was definitely worth it. And of course, if you graduate from this like top universities, it's very, very easy to like, not super easy, but still like it's compared relatively easier to get job. But my dream was to start my own company, game company, because I like games. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make a lot of mobile games. Like, and then I'm gonna name it YY Games. <laughs> Why my games? So I met a lot of like uh, students who had like similar similar dream with me. Oh yeah, like yeah, let's partner up and then let's like make games together. So we were like doing some stuff together. Why 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 games? Yeah, why why games? And we're like doing stuff together, trying to join like startup club and then going to a lot of different convention because I studied really hard back then. I also knew how to code. What was it? Java and JavaScript. So someone someone that knows someone doing startup company hired me as a front-end developer and I was a front-end developer for a while. Yeah, Code Genie, I was like... I was like this. Code Genie, this is a keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like 
making some front app, developing apps and stuff. And then my brother walks in, and my brother was like, and my brother <laughs> walked in. My brother was like, "Yo, I know this girl, Pokimane." And then she streams, and then she just talk and play a game, and then she gets tons of, she earns a lot of money, and then she, <laughs> and then she's like rich as fuck. Why don't you start playing some game? So I was like, hmm. Okay, so this was 2017. And uh, it's still then, our family wasn't wealthy and I had to like, I had to earn money myself and uh, everything. <laughs> yeah, so my, my brother was like, yeah, try it. So, so I was like, mom, please. Mom, please, PC, buy me PC. So my mom actually bought 2K, no, 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 1K PC because my mom didn't have that much of a money as well. So my mom actually got me 1k PC that is like pretty shit, but also not too bad. So um, I got a PC and then I was like, yay. Okay, let's do this. And I wasn't, I was not sure. I was not sure if I should go to Africa because in Korea, Africa is like super popular or Twitch. I wasn't sure, but I know Africa, there are like a lot of sexy, sexy BJs and then like a lot of, you know, I felt like Africa doesn't really match because I wanted to play a game, but Africa is not game. And then I was like, yeah, I like game more. So I chose Twitch. I started off as playing games. So the first game I played was like, pop no, 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 League of Legends, League of Legends. Because my brother said League of Legends is so big in on Twitch. So I was like, okay, aha, I should start as a League of Legends streamer. <laughs> So, but I was so bad at it and my brother started teaching me because my brother was diamond and then I was just like so not talented My brother was like, oh my god, just press the fucking button. How difficult is it? And my brother said I'm like so fucking stupid. So I was like <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna play League of Legend. So I gave up on League of Legend and then I started playing some like Variety games and PUBG, PUBG. I played PUBG. I also played Life is Strange in the very beginning. There was like less than 10 people when I was playing Life, Life was Strange, like Life is Strange 1 or something. And then there were like, yeah, literally almost no viewers. And it was like very quiet. I played To the Moon. And then I started having fun PUBG, so I played a lot of PUBG. And then there are like few people, and then this around this time, I think Kufu and like Claves, Zoa, and then like some some of the people that you might recognize names, like these people who are like fifty something months up. You know, when I was playing PUBG, these people like joined, and I started off as English. I I spoke English, okay. So I was an English streamer, and then I was just chilling, playing game, and so I think it was like after three months. I'm not 100% sure, but after three months of streaming, my viewer was like from zero to, I don't know, 100? Around 100-ish. And then there were like people who were watching me and I wanted to grow more, of course, because I'm very, very ambitious person. I, I have very high goals. I'm like, yeah, I want to grow more. Growth. I was like trying to attend some kind of like Twitch event where you get like exposed to a lot of like uh, viewers or something. And then Twitch events such as like, what is it, Just Dance? Just Dance, dance competition or something. But I only went because I didn't have, I didn't know that many people or anything. So all these like events are Korean based. So I was like, yeah, maybe because I live in Korea, maybe I should speak Korean. And then I went to like this Twitch con or Twitch party and I met some like t Korean streamers who gave advice and they're like, yeah, if you want to grow in Korea, then you should speak in Korean. Like, I don't know why you started as English. So I was like, oh man, you know, stupid idea. Yeah, back then, the people gave me such, such like advice. So I was like, hmm. Well, it's too bad. It's too bad that uh, past three months feels like it's gonna be like nothing. But um, in the long run, maybe it is better to change to Korean. Because I love streaming so much, I actually took a break from Yonsei for two years. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna take a break from Yonsei two years. So that delays my university years, six years. 
no graduation. <laughs> just focus on like what I want to do. <laughs> I took maximum breaks, which is two years. That's the reason why I graduated like super slow. Before I completely changed the Korean streamer, in the beginning I did like a English stream, and then after a little break, Korean stream. I did like two streams a day, which was very very not good. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. And then after a little, after a long, deep consideration, I was like, you know what? I will just like, you know, I was like crying. I was like, I'm sorry, guys, but uh, you know, I want to change to like Korean because you know I want to grow my channel more, and I think like I should, I should stream in Korean. So I was like, feels bad, man. And then my viewers were like, Sag. And then when I was uh, streaming in Korean, I played Hearthstone because I really liked Hearthstone a lot back then. And then I was like, playing Hearthstone. I was like, yay, I like Hearthstone. Hearthstone, Hearthstone. And then I was around like, I don't know, 100 or less than 100 when I was uh, streaming in Korean, when I was playing like Hearthstone and all of a sudden, like literally all of a sudden, I was like one day I was just streaming and then my chat room was like like 777777 777 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, like 777 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, like, like this, I was like hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and my also my view view count was like or 700 or something and then it was like keep growing so i was like what is going on like what what is happening and i was speaking in korean like why why are these people like spamming 777 someone explained like oh yeah like taiwanese people just like dropped like stopped by i'm not 100 percent sure how it happened but a lot of people just spamming 777777777 And then uh, I was like, okay, this is, a, this is a good opportunity And then because they're not Korean uh, I spoke English again, naturally So I spoke English, I was like, oh, hi And then the reason why I became Penguin Sister is I got Penguin, si penguin costume back then so ugly as penguin costume and I did just dance with the penguin costume and then chat was like 777 let's go fucking cute 7777 I was like okay well hell yeah so that's how I blew up in Taiwan when that happened I flew to Taiwan a lot too like Taiwan trip and then when I was uh, traveling Taiwan I did a lot of IRL stream and that is how I slowly trans slowly had transitioned from gamer to IRL streamer because you know I had a lot of fun doing IRL streams and then it, it seemed like viewers love IRL stream too so I went to like literally so many places in Taiwan like from top to bottom actually and then I went to Taiwan like literally every month <laughs> Even right now, whenever I'm in like Europe or whenever I'm in America, there are people who live in those continents or live in those places or country. They they become like, oh, Juni is in my country, and they start watching more. Also, Taiwan was the same. When I whenever I was in Taiwan, I had like way better viewership too. You know, it was like oh, like three k or like something like that. Whenever I was in Korea, it was like 1k or something. So I was like, yeah, I think I should live in Taiwan. But I still has, haven't graduated university. And my, grad, my university was like, yo, if you don't come back, because two years expired, and if you don't come back, we might have to like expel you because there are, you gotta graduate. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna graduate from the university first. Especially when I was, when I had to go to like school and then streaming together, I had, go, I had school and then streaming. Even with school, I, I went to Taiwan like almost every month. I tried to. I couldn't stream for that long. I only streamed for like four hours if, oh, if I could. Whenever I was traveling Taiwan, I streamed pretty long hours though. And then because I went to Taiwan so often, I uh, spent $4,011 to go to like fancy uh, institute, Nihao. I cannot even write Nihao. Oh shit, I forgot. Hi, <laughs> Mandarin Institute. <laughs> Mandarin Institute. And then this is where I spent $4,011 to learn Mandarin in Taiwan. I cannot even write my name in Mandarin anymore. I forgot. Ni Hao? Yeah, but anyway. But I can, I can understand and I can speak a little bit. Kui Shuo Zhong Yi Dian Dian Zhong Wen. Yeah, yeah, like, I can speak a little bit, so it's not completely worthless. 
I guess I would say like, you know, I lost 3,000. I, I still have 1,000 worth of study. But anyway, I, I studied in Taiwan. And then I kind of like wanted to stay in Taiwan for a long time. And I also wanted to join like some kind of org too, like Taiwan org, you know, so that they can like support me with a lot of stuff. But I didn't actually, I wanted to, but I didn't because the contract was kind of like not satisfying. I was like, yeah, I want to live in Taiwan, but uh, maybe not sure. But then this, I think the last year, I'm not 100% sure, not orgy, org. I wanted to join like Taiwan org too. And then there was this time when I was like, oh shit, this language barrier is like really, really bad. Like, because learning Mandarin is like very difficult, it's so difficult. And then language barrier, it's like, whenever I wanna... Because I'm a streamer, I talk and talk and talk. I'm like, hey guys, and then I wanna talk. And then viewers, a lot of viewers are like... What? A lot of viewers are like, huh? Like that. And I'm like, yeah, I wanna, I wanna talk, but you know, there was always language barrier. And especially when I, when I want to play a game, like, I had to find a game that speak that speak in English but a subtitle in like Mandarin or something it was really difficult and a lot of restrictions so I was like yeah maybe you know I will keep speaking because I I'm, I wasn't gonna change my stream into entirely Mandarin so maybe I should broaden my you know audience so you know Mandarin like Taiwanese people can keep watching because you know I will be keep speaking English and then if they enjoy then they stay because i know like there are t still like taiwanese viewers that i know still in the chat but uh, i wanted to like broaden my audience so yugi and i were like you know what let's go to let's go let's go fly to america we're like yes let's go to america so we the airplane and then we're like wing and then flew to fly to america <laughs> And then, this is how season one happened, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did I meet Yugi? Well, I didn't... There are a lot of details missing. I met Yugi during, like, around this time. I went to Water Park Festival and I met Yugi like that. And then I went to US with Yugi. And that was 2019, December. Yeah, 2019, December. Pre-COVID, people didn't know what... Covid was yes, and I was about to graduate, so I was like, okay, this is this is this, now it's my world, you know. I'm gonna I, I don't have university anymore. I want to broaden my audience. I'm gonna go America. I went to LA first, and we had so much fun. We stayed in two weeks, and then we went to Hollywood. Went to Hollywood. We went to like a lot of different places. We didn't have server back then. We had so much stress over like how bad the internet was when I'm, when we we're in LA. But we had a lot of fun too. We went to Universal. It was amazing. It was amazing. And then we had a lot of fun. And then we went back to we went back to Korea because I had like winter school for my graduation. After like two months, after two months of uh, streaming in Korea. I think it was like around February, I'm not sure. I went to like Raj's love or host. I was like invited to love or host. I think it was like Greeks. And then I didn't win. Yeah, because I'm I, my personality is not like super like charismatic or super characteristic. After that, Greek visited my channel a few times and we talked. And then Greek was like, he was living in Texas. So I was like, you know, I persuaded Yugi, I was like, Yugi, do you want to go to Texas together? We, we should go to Texas and we should go to San Francisco, we should like travel US together. So I persuaded Yugi to go <laughs> US together because we had so much fun in LA. We had so much fun in LA, we we're like, hell yeah, we want to like, you know, travel more. So our plan was uh, Texas, San Francisco, and Las Vegas. Las Vegas. So we went to Texas and then that's when I first met Greek too. And uh, yeah, we had fun. And then back then, believe it or not, I think it was March. Believe it or not, around this time, Korea already had COVID and Taiwan also had COVID. And then I was in Uber and then I was I was talking about COVID. I was, I was talking about COVID. And then Uber driver was like, what is COVID? It was like that, like people didn't know anything in America. But then March or something, 
COVID cases increased a lot in U.S. and then quarantine 2020 quarantine quarantine already after staying in Texas, I Yugi and I were in like San Francisco. We're in like yay San Francisco, and then Aspen. Or like I was talking to Aspen a few times, and Aspen was like, "Yo, current, yo, like COVID is really bad. So if you want, you can just come, come, come over and then stay with me. Come over and stay." So yeah, so Aspen was like super inviting, and then it was like very nice. But we didn't want to like you know stop because we wanted to like stick to our original plan. I wanted to go to like Las Vegas with Yugi, but then. <laughs> So we actually flew to Las Vegas, and then we stumbled upon this news like, oh, Las Vegas, everything is closing, COVID is really bad, and blah blah blah, very very serious. So after Las Vegas, we're like, oh, okay, this is not gonna work. So we didn't even stay in Las Vegas; we only stayed like one day, and then we flew back to I flew back to Texas, and then Yugi flew back to LA because Yugi liked LA more, I liked Texas more. So and then I had like. Aspen place to stay, and that is how season work, season one, happened. Yeah, that is how season one happened. Yuki was in LA uh, with Peter Park TV and Fusli, and I was I was with Aspen. Shipping era, <laughs> yeah. So I think afterwards you guys know season one happened, and then season two happened. A lot of things happened because I was like you know doing quarantine, and then there were a lot of like. Dramas and a lot of shipping, a lot of things that a lot of Twitch viewers would enjoy. And then Aspen and I were like, you know, became best friends forever. Yeah. And then there were a lot of dramas too. There were a lot of dramas too. Like you know. And I wasn't sure how Aspen actually like felt about me. There were just like too many, sh too much shipping. And then I never thought Aspen as like more than friends and then chat was like always shipping it made like environment or atmosphere a little really weird and then I got a lot of stress over like Aspen's uh f I don't know if they're Aspen's follower but they were all they would always like send me weird dms and saying like get off get away from my paladin you succubus and then they were like hating on me I was like what the fuck did I do man like <laughs> just like being friends and shit. We're, like, why can't I just have a nice friendship? I didn't even seduce anybody. Season 2 was kind of like, eh. Season 1 was awesome. Yeah. Maybe uh, once the situation gets a bit better and then everything gets more stable, you know, Aspen and I could get to hang out more, you know, do more fun stuff together in the future. But, you know. Yeah, he was busy too. He was busy with the OTK and stuff. Yeah. So that is how my life unfolded so this much was my streaming and then i talked about how what i did for my university life and how i had to study a lot to go to yonsei and then how my family didn't have money so we were living in like with grandma and then i had to do a lot of weird jobs annoying jobs and my mom and dad, I didn't really talk that much about my mom and dad. Well, my dad's company was like, you know, broke in the beginning, but then it didn't work out in US. But uh, later on in Korea, it started to, you know, work out. So, you know, we're living in a pretty good house that you guys call mansion. Very pog nice story. Yeah. Well, it was just like story of my life rather than draw my life because it was just very bad drawing. Yeah. Hi, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget to click the subscribe button and also the like button. And if you want more content, I stream on Twitch almost every day. And I also have Patreon. All the details are in the description so you can check those out too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on next video. Thank you!